Hallelujah, church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, before we, we go to our songs, I would like us to do something. By the way, have a great night. Our Father is in the house. Come on, come on. You can do better. Can you celebrate the angel over this house like you mean it tonight? You. It's good to have you home. Thank you, sir. Please have your seat. Thank you, church. Tonight we're going to be declaring the name of Jesus. The name, not just as a name as our fathers taught us. He said the name is just beyond the name, but it's an office. And tonight we'll be declaring the name over every situation of your life. Over every long-standing challenges that have refused to give way. And as we resound that name, Jesus... We will give way tonight. Hallelujah.
Jesus. It could be better than that. Just go ahead and lift those voice to him. There is power in your name. the name of the Lord. Let's lift our hands to heaven and wave it to Jesus blessing him from the depths of our hearts. Father, we bless you again. We bless you because you are God. We bless you for the name and the authority that is back of that name. 
tonight we pray that you visit us let your word come with power let it change let it transform let it heal let it deliver in the name of jesus christ father give me an encounter tonight please lift your voice and pray give me an encounter tonight even by your spirit an encounter tonight even by your spirit hallelujah for in jesus name we pray for in jesus name we pray god bless you please be seated it's a joy to see every one of us we thank god for the privilege again it says i thank my god paul speaking in remembrance of you all we thank god because of the mighty things that he continues to do in our lives hallelujah for those of you who were not able to make the session yesterday please do well to get the teaching and listen to it we taught on the seed of abraham please get the teaching and listen to it again and again the bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of god in jesus name we pray i'd like us to please bless the lord for pastor abubakar god bless you sir such an honor to see you thank you so much is this the best you can do hallelujah thank you sir thank you so very much hallelujah very quickly we'll just perform a function before we go into the teaching of the word we want to dedicate a few children as we always do um so please very quickly we have just about five minutes for this um so all the parents please once we call you just come no singing no dancing straight to the point just come to the altar our time is already gone so that we would hurry up praise the name of the lord the first on the list here is um Ame Francis and Perfection, a family of Francis, one of us here. Let's celebrate them as they come. Hallelujah. Then Solomon Emmanuel and his wife Blessing. Please keep clapping as they come. And then Solomon Ajibile and Mary. Keep clapping until they come. God bless you. Hallelujah. You are not just clapping for them. You are clapping for the next generation. What God is doing in this ministry. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. I will always remind us that dedication of anything is one of the proofs of humility. Because you are acknowledging number one that you do not have the power in yourself nobody has the power to raise a child by their strength to turn a seed to become a champion it takes god are we together every parent is a steward and so when we dedicate children it's not just a church ritual they are returning to jesus number one to say thank you hallelujah jesus said which of you by worrying can add a cubit to your hair that means if you see any miracle happen the credit goes to god are we together now so dedication is an act of thanksgiving but number two you are officially asking the lord to take over the parenting and the raising of that child except the lord builds a house he says they labor in vain are we together now it's important you understand this so it doesn't just become a ritual to present certificates so that when the children grow they would know that they were not dedicated to idols because whoever you dedicate your child to is the one who is officially allowed to take care of the destiny of that child if you dedicate your child to an idol then the idol on legal basis has a right to say okay this is my property hallelujah so i congratulate you every one of you god bless you let's celebrate them <laughs> hallelujah all the glory belongs to you 
All the glory belongs to you, O oh God. We are joining them to say thank you, Jesus. the Lord on behalf of Jesus Christ I congratulate and celebrate every one of you we thank God it is the Lord's doing it is marvelous in our eyes and we celebrate God for this we pray that God will bless you and help you in the name of Jesus now before we dedicate proper can you stretch your hands just whilst you're seated you don't have to kneel just keep standing please stretch your heart and pray as though you are praying for your own biological child everything you would have declared over your own child or your grandchild please declare over them father we bless them is someone praying we decree and declare that these children are growing in wisdom in stature and with favor with god and with men they are taught of the lord great is their peace declare long life over them declare health and vitality over them declare extraordinary intelligence declare that when they attain the age of discretion they will intentionally hand over their lives to Jesus is someone still praying father we bless you for these children bless them declare the children will not be raised by widowers the children will not be raised by widows. The children will not be raised by orphans. Since God has given them the opportunity to see their father and their mother, it will remain so. Is someone praying? In the name of Jesus, we decree and declare, even by the power of the Holy Spirit, the resources to raise these children in the fear of the Lord is released supernaturally. They are protected from the evil and the decadence of the time. For in Jesus' name we pray. For in Jesus' name we pray. May I have the honor of please inviting Pastor Abubakar to come and declare a fatherly and a priestly blessing upon them and then we'll present the certificates. God bless you. Let's honor him as he comes. Glory, hallelujah. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. But I will stand on this platform of love and of grace. I will return all the glory back to you for this seat. We rejoice with this family. And we ask Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, that the destiny of these children be secured. In the name of Jesus. Father, we ask that the agenda of the enemy upon the earth be thwarted. In the mighty name of Jesus. We declare that these children, Father, shall grow in strength in the name of Jesus. Father, everything that is needed to raise this student, we ask of thee by the power of the Holy Spirit that you provide unto this family in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Once again, to you alone be all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Let's celebrate him. <laughs> Hallelujah. So we'll just um, announce their names. What will happen is once I announce the names and then we'll just appreciate them, present the certificates and just snap so the camera people just be there so that we'll save time. The first we have here is Shalom, Ebo and what's the other one? No, Sazeme. Okay, so you heard it. Shalom, Ebo. May God bless you. Let's celebrate the baby. Congratulations. This is to certify that Shalom Ebo, who was born on 27 March 2022, is today dedicated unto the Lord, 22nd July, in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. And we decree and declare that this dedication remains so in her life, in the presence of her father, Amen, Francis Amen, 
and her mother sandra perfection francis in the name of jesus christ congratulations thank you okay so you can just turn so we'll just do the photo once let's celebrate them in jesus name the second here is um joshua fathers if i cannot call joshua emmanuel god bless you so i'll do the english pronunciation and every father hallelujah this is to certify oh dear the little one is crying this is to certify that joshua emmanuel was born on the 12th of march 2022 is hereby dedicated unto the lord today 22nd july we dedicate this child in the name of the father of the son and of the holy spirit in the presence of his father solomon emmanuel and the mother blessing emmanuel you will grow from glory to glory in jesus name congratulations hallelujah let's celebrate the wonderful child in the name of jesus christ finally we have now a daughter hadassa agape solomon and the final name. all right so god bless you let's celebrate her i was i was going to ask and say what what is wrong with our our female babies are the men just producing males 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 so we have a consolation here in the name of jesus this is to certify that hadassah agape solomon was born on the 12th of march 2022 is hereby dedicated unto the lord in the name of the father in the name of the son in the name of the holy spirit on this day 22nd july in the presence of her father solomon ajibile and the mother mary solomon we pray that your daughter will indeed be like Esther in the palace. In Jesus' name we pray. Congratulations. God bless you. Let's celebrate them. Hallelujah. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord honor you. In Jesus' name. Congratulations. Let's celebrate them as they return back to their seats. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord we're all welcome in jesus name we had quite some showers of blessings in the name of jesus that is how god will keep raining blessings upon your life amen, amen. um if let me repeat again that if you did not have the opportunity to be here yesterday or to listen to yesterday's teaching please let me request again that you do well to get it so that you can listen now the second function very quickly before i begin teaching if you are here and you are leaving for service nysc or you've left all those who will be going for service please rise you don't have to come out just rise where you are and let's celebrate them and then rise we want to pray and declare over your life hallelujah some some have gone some are about to leave hallelujah now please wherever whatever direction your hand can find let's just stretch our hands as a family of faith and release the blessings of this house upon them in the name of jesus christ you are not just going you are sent sent as ambassadors of the kingdom in the name of jesus are you declaring over their life you carry the favor of god to whatever area you've been assigned regardless the area we command you to prosper in the name of jesus you will prosper in your spirit you will prosper financially god will position strategic destiny help us to bless you you will not die on the way you will not die while you are there in the name of jesus the lord will separate you from the company of wicked and unreasonable people it will only be for you from glory to glory and from grace to grace For in Jesus' name we pray. 
father we send these ones forth with power with grace with favor in the name of the father in the name of the son and in the name of the holy spirit congratulations god bless you oh i just spotted pastor shagun god bless you so good to see you hallelujah galatians 1 24 i'm teaching tonight on the subject they glorified god in me they glorified god in me hallelujah they glorified god in me in my life be glorified be glorified glorified be glorified you get the glory you get the glory you get the praise you, get the you, take, the you take the honor i just want to say Thank you get the glory you get the glory you get the praise you get the praise you take the honor I just want to say thank you So in my life In my life Be glorified Be glorified In my life Be glorified Matthew chapter 5 and verse 13 Jesus is teaching now teaching the disciples and he began to teach them a few things that will form the foundation of our discussion he said ye are the salt of the earth but if the salt has lost its sever wherewith shall it be salted it is henceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trodden under foot of men. 14. Then he says, Ye are the light of the world. You are a city that is set on a hill that cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light to all that are in the house. Verse 16 now. He says, Let your light so shine before men someone says so shine declare it so shine so shine before men that they may see your good works and it's not enough that they see your good works it stops at just seeing and appreciating your good works then it has not brought profit to the kingdom seeing your good works is one level and one layer but they must end up glorifying your father which is in heaven hallelujah write that word glorify down let's talk a bit about that word to glorify means number one to make famous to glorify means to announce the worth or the value of a person or a thing to glorify means number one to make famous number two it means to announce the worth or the value of a thing and a person to glorify means to compel the attention of men towards that object or that person to glorify means number three to compel the attention of men towards that person or towards that object these are all the expressions when you talk of glorify these are the things that it means so when the bible says let your light so shine before men that they may see your good deeds and glorify you can now replace it with what you've written what's number one to make famous are we are we together now yes to make famous number two to announce the value and the worth that means 
it is your assignment to make sure that whatever name or whatever object is not downplayed is not demeaned not under your watch that's what it means to glorify are we together now to glorify your father which art in heaven number three to compel the attention of many that means if for any reason anyone is not looking towards that direction something about your life will compel that attention so that they can look towards that object or that individual that it was that's what it means to glorify to extol to make the worth of a person or a thing visible are we together now when most people read this scripture please give it to us again 5 16 matthew when most people read the scripture the part that their attention would get to is see your good works and then it stops there so behind most of the things that we do as believers subconsciously we think that just by seeing the wonderful things automatically the father is glorified the bible here says that they may see your good works and that means it is not compulsory that seeing your good works will lead to the father being glorified it is your assignment to make what they see force them to glorify god so they can see your good works and just clap for you as a great person an intelligent person but there is a way you present it the key is not their seeing the key is in your presentation there is a way you present the good works and the results in a way that will make people to make his fame or make him glorious in that sense to compel attention that means if people see your good works and they do not end up glorifying your father your good works does not have spiritual value at best they will just clap for you for being diligent is someone learning now oh that's pastor gideon god bless you good to see you let's celebrate him hallelujah let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works but it should not just stop at seeing that means your good works must be a preacher there is a kind of sermon that your good works must preach are we together something about your results and your good works must compel people to glorify the father if you're with me already say amen, amen. do you know please look up most believers and most christians desire results say results we desire to see results in every area of our lives and it is god's will and god's desire that our christian experiences are full of results in fact in that same um that same matthew 5 um no 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 john john chapter you have not called me but i have called you and ordained you that you should go and bear fruit john chapter 15 and verse 16 when you read verse 8 you read verse 16 give us verse 16 you have not chosen me but i have chosen you and ordained i've taught you what it means to ordain to legitimize an operation that you should go and bring forth fruit listen carefully and that your fruit should remain are we together i have ordained you to go and bring forth fruit to go and bring forth fruit so god is not against the believer having and producing results but I, my goal of teaching you tonight is to let you know why many sincere believers who may even be doing many things right do not seem to be able to command results in certain areas it is because we have not understood that our ministry as far as the manifestation of results is not just for men to see and acknowledge us but that we must move past that layer until you get to a point where god is glorified in and through your life and your results you cannot secure his commitment to perpetually working in that result hallelujah are we together many of you know 
people in especially those who market products there are those who they call brand ambassadors have you heard of such a thing a brand ambassador that means an authorized individual who has a contract with the company is that true and his job is to use his influence and to promote the product so that individual within the time of that contract is mandated to if it's a shirt he will wear it if it's a product they will give him if it's a car they will give him that car free provided he knows why he's driving it if you are a brand ambassador for mercedes and they catch you with toyota even if you have toyota in your house within the limit of that contract you are supposed to limit yourself to only that product because the goal is not just to drive it the goal is that your influence will compel people to want to follow you suit is someone understanding this now and for as long as you sign that contract with them it is their responsibility to make the resources available provided you remain a brand ambassador in nigeria and across the globe there are people who later compromise on their contract they found them promoting something else leveraging on the influence of those people you need to see how they teach and they train brand ambassadors someone who may not even necessarily be able to do certain things immediately they are given resources are we together they can fly first class priority treatments and all that is not necessarily because they had the power to give themselves those possibilities but they had subscribed that i donate my life my words my gift my singing my looks my whatever to promote this product and sometimes it can last for three five years and you will see what they are investing on that individual and even be angry and say how come they are spending over 10 million until you find out what they gain back in return are we together for as long as that individual is a brand ambassador the company is mandated to protect them you don't come to waylay that individual and the company keeps quiet because their interest is at stake is someone learning now you need to understand what jesus is saying here let your light so shine before men he says that they may see your good deeds and then glorify through your life glorify your father which is in heaven that means if the father is not being glorified in your life in your generation in your time in your region you have to take the responsibility is one of three things number one either you are not an ambassador or number two you are an ambassador that is barren of results or number three the presentation of your results is such that you are the one taking the glory it has to be one of these three is someone learning now let me repeat again that if the father is not acknowledged and glorified in a territory in a generation then the believers it has to be one of three explanations number one it is either you are not a true ambassador are you together now so when he says i have called you and ordained you it means no power should question your producing results because you were ordained and authorized by a government that is potent hmm. this is powerful there is a spiritual immigration system that keeps calling foul over the lives of people because number one they are not true ambassadors and yet they want the honor of ambassadors are we together now they are not believers they don't care about god they don't love the things of god but they want the miracles god produces they want the fame god produces they want the anointing that comes from a believer but they are not interested in that and they will try ask the sons of skiva they tried it we adjure you by jesus whom paul preaches and that that red line happened in the realm of the spirit the demons themselves said we are not that ignorant jesus we know a man approved of god paul we know a man approved of god who are you in other words what government are you representing and the bible says the demons beat those people and they went out naked is someone learning now so if the father is not glorified i will say it again the father 
that means if the worth the relevance the fame of the father and of the kingdom is not being perpetuated within your environment there are only three explanations number one we have to examine whether you are a true representative of the kingdom we have to vet your being saved and we have to vet your passion for God if you truly love him and desire to see him lifted is someone is someone following now then number two if we do verify that you are a legitimate ambassador the second area now becomes you must be ignorant about something that your being your 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 representation is not effective because you are now barren of results it is possible to be a believer it is possible to be with jesus and yet not have results that's what happened to the disciples they were with jesus and so the day they did not see jesus they came to them they came to them with one who already had a condition are we together now and they could not help that person they did everything they knew to do proximity to jesus does not automatically guarantee results the disciples were close to him they probably were sleeping on the same bed or the same area and yet it could not work how about elisha and gehazi he took the same rod that will produce miracles laid it upon a dead body and nothing happened and the prophet said get out it's not about the rod there is a relationship factor in this thing there is a knowledge factor in this so if your life is not producing these kinds of results number one we have to examine if you are really in the faith then number two we have to examine the extent and the kind of spiritual illumination that supports your desire for results hallelujah when you watch the power holding company there are times that the voltage is very low it cannot power certain gadgets is that true so there is light but not enough to power that gadget can i tell you please look up there are many people in time past in the body of christ and even in creation who have been trusted with tremendous levels of results and yet in the midst of it the father was not glorified what then is the purpose of the church if he's not revealed and glorified what then is the purpose of the business if it's not revealed and glorified what then is the purpose of the money if it's not revealed and glorified for most of us we have forgotten that we have been bought with a price and that we are brand ambassadors do not forget that the brand you are promoting is not toyota the brand you are promoting is not mercedes-benz i know you love your car and every time you fix that mercedes-benz label so that people can see it and know it's not a fake one but let me see what you are doing to the name of Jesus. Show me the adjustments that you make to make sure that from a distance, when people see it, they know that this one is Jesus you are promoting. Hallelujah. Is someone hearing now? Immediately, you can tell what category you are in right now from this discussion. There are those who are not authorized ambassadors because they do not even know the king nor the kingdom that this is all about number two there are those who are in the kingdom but have not obtained sufficient light for their witness to be visible and then there are those who have truly paid their price but you see with increase and with result comes a lot of forgetfulness let it not be we're discussing with the leaders and the workers yesterday that when you have built houses huh, and built this and that and that when god now increases your ministry now you are a millionaire now you have money now god uses your church whatever it is and you forget that i am a brand ambassador do not make the mistake of vashti if Vashti was a bad woman from the beginning, the king would not marry her. He married her because at some point in her life, she seemed to be a worthy wife, but something happened. When she got into the palace, you know in the palace those days, you didn't do anything. Just snap your finger and everything would come. And so Vashti forgot that she was only queen because she married a king, not because she fought any war and won. Her sitting on that throne is because of relationship, 
not personal conquest and the king now called for her you are my wife you are my image so she just felt no this is your thing i'm tired i'm embarrassed you can't keep falling my hand like this i have my own agenda too and that was the end of it do you know the king was so good he did not even want to do anything to her it was the elders who came and said king don't keep quiet this will become a trend she will now be promoting another brand rebellion being that brand he said let that woman get out there is no record of her saying sorry and she left now esther wanted to make the same mistake too a village girl who was taken from shushan and when she became queen when it was time her man was plotting to destroy god's people and she was the only person being his wife who had access to his ears and his heart aside from her man and mordecai would imagine that she would leverage on that influence to quickly talk to him and she seemed nonchalant and her man i mean mordecai sent her a warning he said do not think you know let it not be have you let it not be that it was for such a time as this that god has raised you in other words do not think when they are done with us you will also be spared you are also a jew and Esther remembered ah i've forgotten that the reason why he brought me here is to see that his purposes are preserved and she said set yourselves to fast forget about whatever royalty we are going to fast tell everyone to fast and she went before the king if i perish i perish and the king lifted the golden censer esther what is wrong and she said no problem king i just want to put a feast to honor you and let you be so well represented as captain over 127 provinces the king said my god this is i'm hearing something that i've been looking for for a long time he said and please can her man also come for that party and the foolish man also joined and went he went the first time the king was so his glory was so flaunted listen without her asking the king said can you make this happen again and she did it again and when she had worn his heart the bible says when it was now the feast of wines she now came wine i will not even talk about that there's power in wine and she came and met the king after he was happy at the height of his excitement and she says king you see that i've represented you sincerely oh yes but i have a need fine you have focused on meeting my need i must be a faithful husband what is your need there is a traitor somewhere that person wants to destroy my people and destroy the agenda of god who is that person and he said her man ah but i'm close to her man the bible says he went into the garden a wise king to think about it and her man now went and knelt down close to her to beg her when he came out and he said what is happening i'm thinking of what to do with you and you are now complicating this go and hang him the same thing he plotted for he was hung there as a testimony let me tell you you don't know how far god can go when you have vowed that your life will represent him there are battles you will not know anything about is when god god is done with them he will come to you and say let me tell you what would have happened to you last year however i went before you because your heart is determined to see me lifted hallelujah hear me please pastors apostles bishops prophets we need to understand that when god begins to produce results through our lives listen carefully most of our results in this kingdom are largely based on principles not necessarily relationships so if your results just happen like that except you present that result in a way and a manner that it spells jesus listen carefully it is possible that people can clap and you end up becoming a celebrity not an ambassador there is a difference between a celebrity and an ambassador a celebrity has influence an ambassador has purpose there is a big difference between a celebrity and an ambassador a celebrity let me repeat has influence by whatever value they provide 
but an ambassador has purpose that my influence is not just a waste it's not just for the sake of it it is for purpose god has not called us to be celebrities he has called us to be ambassadors if being a celebrity is part of the pathway that leads you to becoming an ambassador then he will make it happen this message is very powerful go and listen to it again it explains why certain people may not seem to be able to secure god's commitment there is something about their lives that is not determined to see him glorified don't forget what we are discussing tonight and they glorified god in me and they glorified god in me hallelujah is someone already learning they glorified God in me now please look up if I know that my results or the glorification of the king is directly tied to my result then I now pursue obtaining results not as a carnal quest are we together now I pursue it because now I have purpose to what I am doing is someone getting me now if I know that the healing anointing working in my life the miraculous working in my life influence working in my life will directly translate to Jesus being glorified now I will not be afraid to pursue those things if I know being prosperous will help me to become a faithful witness I can now obtain grace to attract prosperity without feeling ashamed because I know that the goal is not to lift up myself the goal is to lift up Jesus there is no shame when the goal is Jesus did you hear me there is no shame there is no regret there is no guilt when the goal is Jesus there is no shame there is no guilt there is no regret when the goal is Jesus hallelujah when the goal is Jesus when the goal is you something is wrong when the goal is just a name something is wrong let me repeat myself again that there is no shame there is no guilt and there is no regret to your pursuit if your goal is Jesus if you die seeking Jesus there is no shame and there is no loss if you live seeking Jesus there is no shame and there is no loss if because of your desire to see Jesus revealed you will you give up an opportunity to be great and famous once your goal is Jesus there is no shame there is no loss there is no guilt someone is learning tonight so when you come to the Lord father I have come tonight I'm tired of being broke I am tired of being broke I hope you are hearing me God says I'm hearing you loud and clear Lord what is it that you cannot make me prosper you even open the Bible and say apostle said yesterday I'm the seed of Abraham and he said listen to him he has not finished preaching listen to what he's saying now what did Abraham do what did Abraham do with his money what did Abraham do with his energy what did Abraham do with his son I will tell you what he did he took it to the altar for the God of heaven Isaac would die for the God of heaven he did not mind even if it was going to affect his influence he rose up early in the morning and dragged Isaac as if he was not the one who gave birth to him let's go we discussed this yesterday God was watching him let me see if he understands the purpose of the blessing let me see if he understands the purpose of the anointing let me see if he understands the purpose of fame and Abraham laid him on that altar and lifted up the knife and God said stop I have seen ah, I have seen for now I know that you fear me in that you have not withhold your, you withheld your son and he said I swear by my name that in blessing I will bless you in multiplying I will multiply you this is where we miss it I said it yesterday the works of Abraham and they glorified God in me please don't forget everything we have discussed so far defining the word glorify because it is a key word in this discussion tonight and then showing what may be wrong when the father and Jesus his son 
are not glorified within a, in fact john 17 and verse 1 even jesus subscribed to this law of glorifying the father john 17 and verse 1 these words spake jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said father the hour is come glorify thy son that thy son may glorify thee so why does he glorify the son that thy son will glorify thee prosper the son that thy son would glorify you make the son famous Shalikatusiata. lord lift up koinonia that koinonia may glorify you let me tell you when this becomes your prayer you step back and watch god his jealousy clear every mountain before you please keep that scripture let's not just brush it there glorify thy son give thy son the healing anointing give thy son influence take your son here does not just mean male anybody male or female are we together give your daughter a good husband that she may glorify you and god will say amen before you say amen but you pray a nonsense carnal prayer oh god i'm tired of suffering god said you are not serious when it becomes lined up with purpose remember the difference between a celebrity and an ambassador both of them have influence but one has purpose most people want to be celebrities and not ambassadors so when you build the church or you build the empire you make the mistake of nebuchadnezzar now you raise a stature and it is not jesus by the time we watch the people building nebuchadnezzar statue we don't know what else he's building we have to keep watching because we see him using gold and it is safe to assume that he's using it to exalt jesus and somewhere along as we see that carving we start seeing a face that does not look like jesus and the man was carving himself how about the nation of israel that used the gold that god gave them when they started building an image you would think it's jesus and all of a sudden they built a calf and began to bow to him you are the one who brought us out you can use money to build your image like nebuchadnezzar don't be too quick to laugh at nebuchadnezzar you can use your gift you can use ministry to build your face apostle joshua selman and god says that is it that was what all what your fasting and prayer you fasted almost as if you will go blind this is all what is about cars houses crowd anointing is that it from my heart to the heavens jesus be the center it's all about you yes it's all about you from my heart to the heavens jesus be the center it's all about you yes it's all about you from beginning to the end it will always be it's always been you jesus oh jesus listen for many of you while you are seated here let me tell you why it looks like god is not answering your prayer it is because he has found out that there is nothing in your life that is interested in glorifying the lord there are many people here you're not be, you're not prospering it's an act of god's mercy to you to still keep you relevant because if money touches your hand with this state of heart you will be a casualty first to yourself jesus at the center of my life jesus at the center of my life from beginning to the end it will always be it's always been you jesus oh jesus koinonia please hear me let me tell you this if you think what god is doing in this ministry is just because a man of god is powerful called joshua selman think again look at me this is all of me you are seeing it's not like there's part of me somewhere this is it you are seeing you are intelligent and you went to school can a man like this 
produce this result you are seeing no there are some results that men cannot produce my dear people even if you are not spiritual we are educated let me tell you the secret when you hide behind the cross and you say father it is for your glory that this is about this business i want to set up i want to establish the biggest mall in zaria the biggest mall in nigeria and the desire is that through the presentation of that excellence or whatever it is there are people who covenanted with god and say lord your house is in need of resources can you trust me and they meant it and god said that's it clear the way and they woke up in the morning and stumbled into business opportunities that changed their lives in one night when you are talking to them as business people you will see the gaps in their knowledge you will know they are not supposed to get this result however the master has chosen because of the sincerity of their heart is someone learning now this is one of the biggest secrets in this ministry believe me that that lust and that desire i want this i want that i want this and you find out that you are strangely producing results powerful results but nobody in your family is safe through your result all that is happening in your family is just jealousy and envy something is wrong your presentation is not such your presentation is showing them i am better than you not jesus is the one who is behind this is someone learning now a man of god met me one day and he had followed me teaching and i i, I told him i said if god says i should close down koinonia now i will do it and he laughed he said apostle you are bold though i won't make that kind of statement and then by next week come and find out that uh, what if the devil uses a wrong you know image and lies to you and all of that and i told him what are you afraid of your statement is a product of the fear of something what are you afraid of that's what you should solve okay let's assume it was a lie and satan said it and you close it then what your ego your reputation that's what needs deliverance it's not about closing and opening the ministry no at all for your glory i will do anything just to see you to behold you as my king for your glory i will do anything just to see before we continue i want you in one minute to pray and say lord i don't know what may have been the purpose for my desire for power and for results some of you you just want to cure hardship some of you you are tired of being looked down on these things are not enough reason please pray in one minute lord search my heart yet again man of god are you praying Apostle, I want to travel to America. What for? Apostle, I want to marry a multi-millionaire. Nothing wrong with that, but what for? Apostle, I think I need a car. Or I need a new car. What for? I want to complete my building project by the end of this year. What for? Do you want to be a celebrity or an ambassador? what are you looking for say or to see the purposes of god lifted through your life someone pray hallelujah hallelujah do you understand all i've taught so far There is nothing wrong 
in desiring results i've shown you from the scripture he says we are salt and he says we are light are we together in fact he even says if your salt loses its saltiness its ability to preserve its ability to add taste and value you will be thrown underfoot and trampled by men so god desires us to produce results more than we will ever desire but first things first the first thing to fix is to know that it is beyond seeing your good works they must glorify your father which is in heaven hallelujah let's touch on one more thing before we pray hmm. <laughs> I desire the Father to be revealed and glorified through my life. I desire Jesus to be revealed and glorified. It is our theme. It is our anthem in this ministry. Jesus revealed and Jesus glorified. Now, very quickly, I want to show you, since we have settled the fact that God is not withholding results from your life, the only thing he's withholding is you destroying yourself and jesus not being glorified through it now that we have gotten that clear let us take it a step further jeremiah chapter 9 verse 23 there are three biblical um expressions of the glory of god through the life of a man if it is true that god can be glorified in a man then we need to be able to look in detail what are the expressions of glory that can find and must find expression in my life for god to be glorified and here prophet jeremiah taught us number one thus saith the lord let not the wise man the word glory there is the word boast let not the wise man glory in his wisdom so the first expression of glory that can help the saints to be glorified is wisdom he's not saying wisdom is wrong he's just trying to rearrange it relative to something higher which we just addressed so the first is let not the wise man glory in his wisdom everyone say wisdom number two neither the mighty man glory in his might say power that is the second expression of glory and then number three let not the rich man glory in his riches say wealth now please look up these three expressions must be captured in your life if the father is to be glorified in your life number one wisdom number two power number three riches or wealth give us amplified of that statement please jeremiah 9 23 let's see it from amplified it says thus saith the lord let not the wise and skillful person glory and boast in his wisdom and his skill number two let not the mighty and powerful person glory and boast in his strength and power number three let not the person who is rich in physical gratification and earthly wealth glory or boast in his temporal satisfaction and earthly riches relative to these three the bible says next verse 24 so it says let not the wise man glory in his wisdom so that is the first expression of glory wisdom number two let not the mighty man amplified says the one who is powerful so power every dimension of power supernatural power most especially is another expression of the glory of god and the third dimension is wealth hallelujah let me tell you what this is supernatural power seems to be the zenith that is what controls the spiritual realm wisdom is what controls the intellectual realm wealth is what controls the physical realm 
so he says if you want to see the glory of god revealed in and through your life holistically there must be captured in your life and your experience supernatural power you must sustain the ability to bring the realm of the spirit in its entirety under divine obedience you must be able to conquer the intellectual realm by outsourcing a level of wisdom that is higher than human wisdom and then the resources that take away limitation from your life physically that anyone who is able to capture within his space power wisdom and wealth and then on top of that the source and the basis for your confidence does not even become those things but that you know god now your life can be a true reflection of the glory of god i don't have all the time to deal with all of these things but we'll just touch a bit let's start with wisdom wisdom i've done several teachings on wisdom you can get them but just to touch a little bit on wisdom as an expression of god's glory hallelujah in revelation chapter 5 when you read from verse 12 revelation chapter 5 saying with a loud voice just let's go back to amplified uh, let's go back to kjv i meant to say verse 12 12 saying with a loud voice worthy is the lamb that was slain to receive for us now power riches wisdom strength honor glory blessings now you see that wisdom was one of the seven things that were purchased for us in redemption are we together so by redemption every believer in christ should have access to wisdom every believer in christ paul was praying over the church in ephesians chapter 1 and verse 17 i hope we're able to manage those outside if there is ever a need to squeeze them in here even if it's temporarily we're in the season and um it will be fair enough it's better for them to stay somewhere standing than to let's be sure that no matter what it is especially those who are at the edge that they are not affected by the rain it's better to be inconvenienced inside than to be convenienced outside so those who uh, especially at the edge of the canopy my apologies just to break so that we help these people let's not allow them even if it's to be at the at the edge no problem we all know that is the season and then there's the crowds of people everywhere it's only responsible that at least we are thoughtful praise the name of the lord are we together so paul was praying and he said ephesians 1 17 that the father of our lord jesus the father of glory may grant unto you the spirit of wisdom so wisdom is not just a mental state there is the spirit of wisdom you find that in isaiah 11 also and verse 2 the spirit of dominion the spirit of the lord then the next you find is the spirit of wisdom and understanding hallelujah this is very powerful and james chapter 3 from verse 15 the bible there we're not really doing an extensive study on wisdom just to connect it to the teaching on glory the bible tells us that there are three kinds or three levels of wisdom apostle james now that the first is the wisdom that is earthly earthly wisdom sophia it is called number two or four kinds really wisdom that is sensual just brain work common sense then there is wisdom that is devilish or demonic verse 16 we're reading to 17 it says for where there is envy and strife and there's confusion and every evil work then 17 says but the wisdom that is from above so there is the wisdom that is from above supernatural wisdom there is earthly wisdom there is sensual wisdom are we together and then there is demonic wisdom so that there is no confusion as to what we are talking about we are talking of wisdom that descends from above the bible says it is first pure 
peaceable gentle everybody say wisdom in first corinthians chapter 2 we we'll begin our reading from verse 6 let's hurry up please first corinthians chapter 2 we we'll begin from verse 6 apostle paul was teaching us and he said how be it we speak wisdom among them that are mature or perfect yet not the wisdom of this world nor of the princes of this world that comes to not seven it says but we speak the wisdom of god in a mystery and then he says even the hidden wisdom of god that was ordained or designed for our glory are we together now very very important so there is the wisdom that connects to the glorification of the saints so that in their being glorified the father will be glorified the wisdom that has been ordained for our glory is someone learning already say wisdom very very important in mark chapter 6 from verse 2 and 3 mark chapter 6 from verse 2 and 3 mark chapter 6 from verse 2 and 3 the bible says when the sabbath day was come he began to teach in the synagogue and many hearing him were astonished saying from whence had this man these things and what wisdom is this which is given unto him and even such mighty works that are wrought by his hands there is a relationship between wisdom and mighty works hallelujah what wisdom is this there is a level of wisdom listen to me ladies and gentlemen there is a level of wisdom that can be made manifest through a man and through a life and a destiny that is higher than your age your gender your exposure your level of experience and when you access that kind of wisdom please look at me it will be impossible for your life to be ordinary that anyone who sees that wisdom being displayed in and through your life they will have to glorify your father which is in heaven everybody say wisdom very very powerful let me give you two definitions of wisdom very quickly i love this definition it came in the place of prayer that wisdom is the supernatural ability to use the written and the inspired word please write it down wisdom is the supernatural ability to use the written and inspired word of god to make accurate decisions and to provide solutions to life problems i will take it again wisdom is the supernatural ability to use the written and the inspired word of god to make accurate decisions and to provide solutions to life's problems is called wisdom you know it is wisdom when you are able to make with it accurate decisions you know it is wisdom when you are able to use it to provide solutions someone say wisdom please look up decisions decide destiny i have taught you this again and again and that your decisions are products of your orientation products of the information that mold and make your belief system when you are able to access superior wisdom the wisdom of god it translates in the kind and quality of decisions that you make number two it it the wisdom of god is at work in your life to the degree to which you are able to provide supernatural solutions to problems in your own life and problems in the lives of others that means if your life is full of problems without answers there is bankruptcy of divine wisdom if your decisions keep leading you to pain and regret and trouble it means you are you don't have wisdom or you are using another kind of wisdom maybe earthly wisdom maybe sensual wisdom common sense maybe even diabolic wisdom but the wisdom from above will always take you above are we together yes wisdom most believers do not know how to access the wisdom of god 
that translates into making quality decisions personal decisions ministry decisions family decisions financial decisions corporate decisions and then provide supernatural solution let me tell you the truth in these end times if you depend just on wisdom that has come through your age or wisdom that has come just from school alone as important as that is or wisdom that has come through common sense get ready to recycle pain in your life because there is a way that cement right unto a man the bible says but the end thereof are the ways of death the wisdom of god is so powerful it will not look like it yet that is the way is someone hearing me the wisdom of god when supernatural wisdom comes god will make you walk around jericho seven times instead of fighting physically if you fight with the sword even if you win you will bleed there will be injuries and yet god can give you sweatless triumph at the instance of wisdom there are some battles just because they are battles does not mean you must fight mm -mm. the most important thing is that you win we need to pray and cry for wisdom my prayer as a leader my prayer as an individual all the time if i pray for myself is that god will give me wisdom i have seen the fruit of wisdom so far i have seen the fruit of wisdom in this ministry i have seen the fruit of wisdom in my life are we together now there are results that only wisdom can bring i wish i had the time please get my message on wisdom i've taught on that you need to pray and cry and say lord i am tired of making foolish decisions there are decisions that keep recycling my pain people I, I make decisions every day and those decisions don't move me forward you need to start making qualitative decisions one decision that buys 10 years for you one decision that buys 20 years one decision that buys long life one decision that buys influence you can have one decision like Esau that will sell your lifetime. Do you know it was a decision Esau took? One decision using a temporary, carrying a temporary, a permanent treasure to solve a temporal problem. We were saying it, I think it was with the leaders, that there are people, the moment they are hungry, they look at anything around their life that they can sell quickly. They will carry a laptop of 130,000 and sell it for 10,000 because they want to smoke with it or eat with it. That is the Esau dimension of foolishness. Are we together? And you will eat in a restaurant 5,000 or whatever it is and your laptop is gone with all the information there. There are people who carry wristwatches, carry their shoes and sell it. There are many other people who are making unwise decisions like leaving God for money. Foolish decision. Is that true? Allowing your spiritual life to go down because you are looking for fame. Foolish decision. We need to pray and cry for wisdom. Listen, let me tell you the truth. Living in today's world requires walking in wisdom because the variety of options are many and all of them look like god is later you'll find out that you have been wasting your time so that you would not waste 15 years of your life only to turn back and find out that i took a path that i thought was god but was not god there are preachers making decisions that will end them in trouble there are businessmen making decisions that will end them in trouble some of us today our loved ones respectfully speaking they took decisions that brought us into all kinds of demonic things decisions and then supernatural solutions how will people ignore you when your life begins to command solutions by the wisdom of god you are teaching you are guiding that the opening of your mouth are we together now is the communication of divine wisdom please lay your hand on your head if you don't mind and pray in one minute father i receive an impartation of divine wisdom i confess that my decisions are not superior it is very clear that from my decisions i have made mistakes some of you your wrong decisions is why you are where you are right now it removed 10 years from your life 
it removes glory and honor from your life someone is praying lay your hands on your head and decree and declare that in the name of Jesus Christ the glory of God revealed and expressed as the wisdom of God must find expression in my life tired of wrong decisions tired of wrong decisions tired of a life that is barren of results someone is praying hallelujah how do you access the wisdom of God two principal channels or three principal channels really number one through the word of God second Timothy 3 second Timothy 3 I believe that's verse 15 and that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures which are able to make thee wise what makes you wise the holy scriptures the holy scriptures does not make men foolish ladies and gentlemen for those who think that studying the bible makes is is, is a necessary luggage you have to understand that contained in this word of god this bible you see is the wisdom of god that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures which are able to make you wise unto salvation holy scriptures can make men wise number two you can ask for wisdom in prayer james was teaching us does any man lack wisdom he said let him ask let him ask let him ask if you lack wisdom ask ask of god solomon asked for an understanding heart men can ask for wisdom that's the second key very quickly so number one from scripture number two from number three impartation from the careers of this wisdom with proofs number three impartation yes sir you can receive impartation of divine supernatural wisdom from those who carry it there are people that carry divine wisdom and you can receive impartation from these men and women hallelujah most times when i have the privilege of meeting any of the fathers of faith if ever they ask me for anything to pray for I pray for wisdom I say the grace that is at work in their lives in various dimensions especially wisdom because let me tell you the truth when you ever get to a position of leadership you will learn that the variables for success are many and they are very confusing three roads can look the same and you find out that they are not the same you have to follow them is the sixth year of following them that will show you that it was foolishness you need God to help you if you look at it by the physical things you can put a and a a and b and it may not work you need wisdom hallelujah is someone getting this very very important let's recap again number one from scripture number two by asking in prayer and then number three let's look at an example of receiving impartation through wisdom numbers chapter 27 please from 18 and 20 very quickly and then we'll look at deuteronomy 34 9 numbers 27 from verse 18 and the lord said unto moses take thee joshua the son of Nun, a man in whom there is a spirit and lay your hands upon him uh-huh and then he says set him before Eleazar the priest and before all the congregation and give him charge in their sight verse 20 he says thou shalt put some of your honor upon him that all the congregation of the children of Israel might be obedient. So he was instructed to lay hands upon Joshua. Let's see what came upon him. Deuteronomy chapter 34 and verse 9. Deuteronomy 34 and verse 9. It says, And Joshua the son of Nun was full of what? The spirit of wisdom. How did he get it? For Moses had laid his hands upon him. 
laying on of hands does not mean directly putting a hand on you it's a doctrine is captured the laying on of hands means a system of transfer are we together now yes you can lay hands prophetically you can lay hands directly impartation is powerful and tonight someone who came here to church in the name of jesus you will receive practically an impartation of the spirit of wisdom you will know that it has come upon you because in one month your results will show it will show in your ministry it will show in your life quality superior spiritual decisions in the name of jesus christ wisdom number two let's hurry up we need to pray we need to pray let not the wise man glory in his wisdom number two power what is power power is the supernatural force that is responsible for enforcing the will of god god's ability at work in a human and material vessel but power is a supernatural god's supernatural force and the assignment of power is to enforce the will of god that means power is only against what is against the will of god are we together the power of god does not just enforce everything the assignment of the power of god is to make sure the will of god happens in a life in a church in a ministry so if god is the one against you that power will not help you most people think power is just a force that creates changes randomly no supernatural power that comes from god only comes at the instance of his will and the assignment of the power of god is to see that his will for your life is enforced let not the strong man or the powerful man or the man with might romans chapter 1 and verse 4 it takes power to declare God to be the to declare Jesus as the Son of God Romans chapter 1 and verse 4 let's start from 3 and 4 let's go to 3 and then we'll read 4 again my apologies is sad you are not following me here he said concerning his son Jesus our Lord which was made of the seed of David according to the flesh verse 4 he says and declared to be the Son of God with power not with noise declared to be the son of god with power you want to declare that jesus is the son of god you need power ah shaliba rosaziata when you stand before that sick body you want to declare that his lord the son of the living god it will take more than grammar it will take more than the excellency of speech you will need power most believers lack power it takes power in hebrews chapter 1 and verse 3 the bible himself speaking about god and speaking about the word of god he said who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person upholding all things by the word of his power upholding all things psalm 24 and verse 10 i can't read that scripture enough psalm 24 and verse 10 who is this king of glory the lord of hosts let's let's read verse verse 9 and 10 lift up your heads O ye gates even lift them ye everlasting doors and the king of glory shall come in verse 10 it says who is this king of glory the lord of hosts he is the king of glory did I get something wrong? There's one of it that says it's the Lord who is strong and mighty. Hallelujah. Verse 8. The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. Say strong and mighty. He was the Lord strong and mighty and is the Lord strong and mighty. That's why he became victorious in battle. If you are not strong and mighty, even if you are sincere and faithful, you will still fail the requirement for dominion is more than sincerity of heart it is strength and might somebody says strength 
if you turn aside in the day of battle he said your strength is small someone needs to access superior supernatural power supernatural power is not for preachers my dear people demons don't look for only preachers they look for everybody you need power to survive the times today hallelujah who is this king of glory he's the lord strong and mighty Do you know many believers want to see supernatural results in their lives but they ignore the place of spiritual empowerment jesus himself spoke to the disciples he said tarry ye in jerusalem until ye be endued with power i have been teaching you for three years i taught you but all my lecture will sound like rubbish in the face of real life situations until you have power imagine them standing and looking at that guy at gate beautiful and say let me tell you something on the seventh day of three years ago jesus christ came to us and he taught us he said when you see that a man cannot stand number one show compassion point number two speak to the person kindly number three ask the person to stand up that the father can the man will just be looking at them the bible says he looked at them expecting to receive from today everybody who looks at you expecting to receive they will not be disappointed in the name of jesus christ please look at me there are some of you your family members have been looking at you for 10 years expecting to receive you told them you are born again and they said well i don't know the kind of christianity we are doing but i trust you and they have been looking at you on the ground for 10 years till now they have not received anything yet you have been preaching you have been talking stories but it's not backed up with power this night that power factor may it come upon your life hear me it says i am not ashamed of the gospel of christ for it is the power of god not the statement of god not just the message of god it is the power of god unto salvation to everyone that believes i believe in the power of god I have seen what the power of God can do. It can subdue principalities and powers. It can shut the mouth of lions. The power of God can lift a man from where he is to where he needs to be. Can I tell you sincerely, you are not really a blessing if you ignore the power of God in your life. How then will you be able to bless people? Most, do you know that most of people's problems are spiritual? so if all you have is intellectual solutions you will be limited intellectual solutions will only solve intellectual problems physical solutions will only solve uh, physical problems if i'm hungry i don't need power i need food yam and egg and rice and whatever i eat it it solves the problem but if you still eat it physically and you are not satisfied something else is wrong with you because you now see that the physical rice did not solve that problem if you lack blood lack blood like you're a medical person and they're giving you several pints of blood you are not bleeding and yet we don't know where the blood is going to that one now is no longer typhoid and malaria somebody somewhere is stealing from somewhere that is the ministry of the thief represented there at that point you need more than a drink what do you need shouting power that's right believe me the times that we live in those who lack power will fall by the wayside hallelujah those who lack power mysterious problems are being unleashed from hell to the earth and you see people carrying problems that they cannot explain my leg is paining me from leg pain the person sits down and die does leg pain kill no that is more than a medical problem my dear people you ask medical doctors right now the medical doctors are becoming more spiritual when they diagnose a patient once twice they will tell you listen what church do you attend go and fight a man of god quickly because they themselves are learning the enemy has done this the enemy has done this the enemy has caused division in this family that quarrel between father and mother is not normal there is a normal misunderstanding in marriage but this one now is being empowered by a demon spirit the devil wants to cause trouble no that barren
ugliness situation is not just a natural cause of time this is the devil trying to raise his ugly head can i tell you every time you see satan take back wisdom bring out power the language that conquers satan is power hear me you don't use wisdom for spirits no you use wisdom for men wisdom is in the realm of men when you are dealing with the cosmos you need wisdom but when you are dealing with the realm of the spirit take back wisdom and bring power hear me listen as a man of god somebody is telling you this is what is happening i'm collecting my salary i go back home and i'm applying every principle and something happens do you know respectfully speaking in spite of the strike that has happened now when lecturers are paid it should be some accumulated salary there are people who have all kinds of wicked spirits waiting they will never have any problem until that arrears is paid suddenly mysterious problems arise everybody becomes sick even if it's 10 million it must finish and then they are fine do you need wisdom no you have been advising spirits that's why they have not gone we were never given the mandate to advise them you think they are dull no the sons of Skiva came with nonsense and they were speaking English and the demons said Paul we know Jesus we know they begged Jesus and Jesus made one utterance go and that was it listen if you allow the devil deceive you and say I am not in ministry so power is not for me I am just a mother with five children I am just a businessman except the realm of the spirit has no influence over your affairs man of god you want to build a robust ministry for jesus it will take more than just the natural secular church growth principles those are managerial principles and they are important but they are only important if the realm of the spirit is corrected listen if you were alive in the days of noah whether you were a businessman whether you are an entrepreneur whether you were a graduate when that flood comes it will carry all of you together and crash land you it's only those who had the power the wisdom worked on earth but that rain did not come by geography the bible says the heaven sent his rain the earth also sent his rain whoever it meets in between and noah was there can i tell you you will be deceived to believe that it was just the ark that held them alone no they didn't have the kind of sophistication of technology today the ark cannot hold you have you ever seen a flood happening is it a nice river that is just going like that it has capsized you've forgotten the titanic how big would the ark have been it was not kept just by physics there was a hand that kept there after they finished building it no one knows he knows what he did with him and god and god just held it like that while the rivers were moving and the oceans do you know what it means for the whole earth to be immersed with water let me tell you you went to school that the cold the cold alone the freezing temperature would have killed everybody inside that ark what would kill them is not water what would kill them is the temperature by what mechanism did they remain hot when the whole earth was immersed in water come on please use your mind no it's more than the miracle of hiding in a place they were kept by power wisdom built the ark but power kept it through the storms wisdom can build your business but it's power that will keep it against wicked people wisdom can build anything but it is power that keeps it hear me the wisdom of the world can give you a child but it is power that will keep that child the wisdom of the world can give you business but it is power that will keep you. the wisdom of the world can give you a ministry but believe me ladies and gentlemen it takes power dominion is a language of power 
rule thou in the midst of your enemies how do you rule by discussion by negotiation no someone pray in one minute this advising spiritual situations comes to an end the power that changes situations i contend for it tonight what happened over pray pray In the name of Jesus, Jeremiah 32 and verse 17. We are still praying over power. Jeremiah 32. He says, Ah, Lord God, behold, thou hast made the heaven and the earth. How? By thy great power and thy stretched out arm. There is nothing too hard for thee because of the presence of power. The cure for difficulty is power. Oh. Ah, Lord God, you made the heavens and the earth by thy great power. It's good to have wisdom. But let me tell you sincerely you need the power of God are we together and the principal way the power of God is released from the saints over situation is through words where the word of a king is that means if there is no power is either the king is not speaking or he's not a king but if he's a king and he opens his mouth there should be power where the word of a king is he didn't say there is counseling many of us keep advising wicked spirits in our life this spirit of death is not fair now why will you keep coming like that spirits no say unto god how terrible art thou in your ways through the greatness of thy power I will never do ministry without power it's a risk dear people it's a risk and when i talk about power i'm not just talking of falling down and standing up you see pentecostals and charismatics have messed up this whole thing many people fall down and stand up and nothing changes we are talking of power that forces compliance that when god says by this time tomorrow that power moves and cleft everything that want to make it the day after it must be tomorrow because God has said so hallelujah let me give you the last one we have to wrap up hmm. sit down please Jeremiah 29 Jeremiah 9 23 let's finish up so let the wise man not glow in, in his wisdom the first expression of glory is wisdom divine wisdom number two power might ability supernatural ability and then number three it says let not the rich man glory in his riches someone say wealth this is the captain of this realm wealth this is very important there is no dominion in the earth realm in its entirety without wealth in fact the word glory when you study the word cardboard the root word means the weightiness of a thing it is an expression it was used in ancient time to measure money because then they use gold and the rest so the weightier the precious metal the more the value so the word glory there is the word wealth or the weightiness can i tell you the truth my dear people please come to terms with it once and for all 
that if you are poor financially poor you are going to be limited i have thought again and again on the issue of finances the greatest negative effect of poverty and lack is limitation what does it mean to be limit to be limited to be stopped from advancement that's it if poverty were neutral didn't do anything didn't affect anyone that would be fine every time god bless people in the bible go and read it there is nobody who walked with god that among the several blessings that came to him wealth was not part of is it abraham is it isaac is it jacob is it ruth is it lot was it even jesus himself are we together now the subject of wealth is a very broad one we've done a series go to koinonia global and get it and listen to it but let me tell you the truth many of you as you are seated right now the principal cause of your anger and frustration is the limitation it's not the lack of money is the limitation it has created most of us don't like money the way we think it is just because the limitation that it has provided has made you become so obsessed about it are we together by the time your child is here seated and his school fees cannot be paid let's say you're a man of god three children their school fees cannot be paid and the owner of the school is your member is what that's right and now you stand upon the pulpit and say i know my god is faithful and the director of your school is watching you he has given you chance because you are his pastor six months you have not paid the school fees you will not have the confidence to stand and preach the faithfulness of god and the limitation it provides unnecessary battle between you people because now he respects you as his man of god but then they need to move forward and now you are not a good example poverty is evil did you hear what i said now when you hear things like this make sure you are first spiritual before you answer because for carnal people anything that brings delight to the flesh they receive it with joy i have taught you that our perspective when it has to do with wealth and abundance believe me ladies and gentlemen is not self-aggrandizement remember our, 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 our beginning scripture they glorified god in me let no one preach you into accepting wealth uh, poverty as part of the plan of god for your life have you not seen what it has done for people poverty has dehumanized people brought people lower than the dignity that god set for them that thing is evil you have an assignment in your lifetime to conquer it as fast as possible the strange thing is that you can never have wealth if you don't have the first two because it is the presence of the first two in your life that guarantees the manifestation of that third level of glory the combination of wisdom and power is what can bring wealth you cannot have sustainable wealth it says strong men retain riches wise men can get it but it takes power to retain it when you ignore wisdom and you ignore power then forget about walking in the reality of the blessing of the lord yesterday we discussed the seed of abraham remember three levels justification by faith the blessing of abraham then the blessing the holy spirit then the blessings of abraham all of the fringe benefits the physical expressions i made up my mind as an individual that i will not be poor and this is not just some chanting of gibberish from flesh driven people it was a decision that came as a result of concluding you know how the psalm is taught he said when i see the stars i examine the works of your hands then i came to the conclusion what is man me too i sat down i looked at my life and i said no at the end of my life here is my conclusion lack and poverty are limiting and destructive are we together many believers are looking like slaves in this country today slaves in africa because of this and the devil knows this so he will do something to the economy 
you are not truly prosperous until the house of God testifies of your prosperity if the house of God cannot testify of your prosperity you are not truly prosperous I'm, what I'm saying is beyond just meeting your needs having a house or being able to pay rent and having children that's wonderful we give glory to God but we're talking of the level where you can go up the mountain like Haggai said and you can bring wood and you can build God a house that he will be glorified he said the silver is mine and the gold is mine I will shake the heavens and I will shake the earth and the desire of nations will come to you the silver is mine he said go up the mountain and bring wood you don't get wood from a mountain you get wood from the forest but this kind of wood that is needed you have to spend time to the sphere of influence to bring it and you will use it to build God a house and he will be glorified hallelujah there are many sincere preachers today who are falling into the trap of manipulation simply because of economy especially at the times that we live right now people are compromising at different levels because of this the rod of the wicked the rod of the wicked shall not rest upon the lot of the righteous do you know why it says lest he dips his hand the road of the, the lot of the righteous there means their inheritance their land their estate that means it's a prayer point it's not a memory verse that when you are praying say lord let the rod of the wicked not rest upon my inheritance because it can make me do things i never planned doing the rod of the wicked shall not rest upon the lot of the righteous lest they dip their hands in iniquity we're about to pray if God is to be glorified in you you must produce results carry this mentality tonight that you are a brand ambassador you are not branding an earthly product you are not branding cosmetics you are branding you are standing to defend the name and the purposes of the king of kings and the lord of lords and that to be an effective ambassador you must move beyond the realm and the desire to be a celebrity you must move beyond being a celebrity and you must have a sincere desire is someone learning now praise the name of the lord a sincere desire to be an ambassador a witness of the truth we're going to pray and then I'll speak over your life and then we'll be done I will pray just minister we're not going to have the time to I may not have the time to prophesy or do this but this that I've told you you practice this go and get teachings on wisdom go and get teachings on power go and get teachings on wealth combine them you know how you cook soup you first start with water or oil or whatever you put there and then you look for you look for whatever ingredient and at the end of it you will taste and see that that soup is good is that true after you you, you can start smelling it you can start knowing that ah, no no I, I this thing is making sense but it doesn't really profit you until you dip your spoon or whatever and then you taste it you know that it is now ready for my consumption and the consumption of others some of us you are not ready to be a blessing yet you are still in that process you need to allow the holy spirit guide you now god has given you tools go and cry for wisdom go and cry for genuine power and cry that god will grant you grace to be blessed and then you combine those ingredients and wear them like an armor you are ready to be an ambassador when you face the world with difficult situations you will be indomitable over the cosmos because you have the arsenal of wisdom when the realm of the spirit seeks to interfere with the cosmos to manipulate against the purposes of God you have the weapon of power that can speak and then for efficiency in the world of men you will need resources because the rich will always rule over the poor and the borrower will be slave 
to the lender he said the rich and the poor dwell together the lord is the maker of them all he's not the maker of them so but he's the maker of them all man of god don't just pray for members alone sincerely i will tell you it is honest to stand before god and say lord the wisdom and the power and the grace to attract and retain wealth there is the wisdom side of wealth but believe me when i tell you there is the power side of wealth the beautiful thing is that the wisdom side of wealth takes time for you to learn but the power side can be imparted immediately like now are we together oh yes by this time tomorrow is not an advice mm -mm. Mm -mm. go and fish is wisdom you have to learn when the fish will stay and put your net and be patient overnight but by this time tomorrow is the ministry of power there are some urgencies in your life you don't need grace to go and farm you have to wait four months there are times you will need manna to come from heaven immediately who prepared it is not our business we know that it needs at least it didn't come from hell it came from heaven some of you the situation you are in now you have made mistakes already you don't need wisdom now you need power to correct that mistake first then wisdom can now help you to now make it well can i speak over your life please rise up on your feet there are kings there are kingdoms there are mountains and there are thrones only a shoe will reign forever to his kingdom there'll be no end there are kings there are kingdoms there are mountains and there are thrones but only a shoe will reign forever to his kingdom there'll be just a celebrity I need more than influence I need influence that is connected to purpose someone pray Jesus now hear me this is our final night together I have just one more session and then we'll leave tomorrow I'll be praying with the prayer department by 6 30 just one hour 6 37 I don't know how we're going to do it it's particularly for the prayer department but we can't stop all if you are invited and you can find the space I just want to do an early morning prayer with the prayer department and then we'll be good to do some other things and leave but for now just spare me two minutes i want to speak over your life impartation is powerful you don't have to kneel you don't have to do just be ready to receive i truly believe in the power of impartation impartation is receiving what you do not have or what you do not have enough of the wisdom of god is transferable we have received from those who by the privilege of god's grace we have received from the word of God we have received by a sincere desire in prayer for everyone that has get receiven but we have also received from those who are the carriers of this wisdom with proof hallelujah in the name of Jesus Christ
and by the power that raised Christ from the dead in the name of Jesus like the dew of Hammon whether you're a man of God whether in this house or just coming to visit whether you are a businessman whether you are a lecturer whether you are a parent in the name of Jesus I declare at the count of three let that grace that wisdom like you have never received let it come upon you one two three take that wisdom now receive that grace right now receive that grace right now please help them receive that grace right now superior wisdom i impart it upon you supernatural solutions extraordinary decisions no more foolish decisions in the name of jesus receive that grace i impart it upon you by the power of the holy ghost wisdom in the city wisdom in the country wisdom academically speaking wisdom maritally wisdom business wise wisdom in ministry in the name of jesus christ number two ah this one will come on many people the power of the holy ghost the power of the holy ghost to excel in ministry the power of the holy ghost right now wherever you are inside and outside at the count of three take that power now one two three take that power take that anointing for signs and wonders supernatural miracle the power of the holy ghost man of god doing ministry this way you will not rise take fresh grace fresh anointing fresh grace let the gift of the spirit be activated now the gift of the spirit be activated now the power to heal be activated now the power to deliver be activated now please help them God is still releasing something I'm still seeing like like you just falling you will never be the same power upon your hands mantle and oil upon your head strange results strange dimension strange result strange dimension number three let the rich man not glory in his riches i want to declare that grace listen when it has to do with wealth and prosperity i have taught you there are keys and there are principles you need value wealth increase investments so on and so forth but hear me truly there is the power to prosper there is the grace from god i want to not only speak over your finances but release something on you most of you have value but your value is not anointed father in the name of jesus christ let as many young and old male and female everyone here who desires this grace the power and the unction to prosper may that grace rest upon you now may that grace rest upon you now prosper in your finances in the name of jesus christ hear me every helper who must arise in your life in your ministry in your business 
some of you to bail you out of your current financial condition in the name of jesus christ between now and the end of this month we call them by the power of the holy ghost please believe it believe it i call them by the power of the holy ghost there are many of you by reason of this declaration you will step into prepared blessings prepared blessings prepared blessings let me pray for every family here i know that economically speaking it looks like things are tied but in jesus name i place a mark of exemption upon you a mark of exemption upon your children a mark of exemption upon your children's children i place a mark of exemption upon your business upon your ministry you will not fall financially in the name of jesus christ if there is anyone holding what belongs to you in the name of jesus may it be released to you now hear me anyone here who needs a job i decree and declare by the power that created the heavens and the earth between now and the next three months may a supernatural job locate you let it locate you let it locate you let it locate you in the name of jesus christ i declare promotion everyone who has remained at the same level experience increase right now experience increase right now hear me anyone here who is in business and it has refused to work first the wisdom you need may god grant you the power you need may god grant you now that i've prayed for you let me speak to the business in the name of jesus i declare every dead or dying business here come back to life now come back to life now hallelujah please hear me i heard someone was telling me that there was a threat letter that was given to one one environment one community or so somewhere around in the name of jesus who is the son of the living god i decree and declare if there is any conspiracy agree with me or don't sit down and say in the name of jesus we stand as the church of the lord jesus christ we declare cancelled now we release the forces of judgment in the name of jesus christ there is no peace for the wicked in the name of jesus christ hallelujah and the last enemy that shall be destroyed is death if there is anyone here the plague of death is already following you you are having all kinds of dreams people are already sending you prophetic words who are seeing something that should not be in the name of jesus whether it's dead by sickness whether it's dead by accident whether it's dead by the activities of wicked men be exempted from death now be exempted from death now now very quickly please lay your hand if you are trusting god for healing i just have one minute to do this any part of your body you are trusting god for healing hallelujah you are trusting god for healing lay your hands right there and i want to pray for you in one minute father people have come here tonight trusting to receive healing you are the great physician and there is still the balm in gilead therefore i decree and declare there is someone you have a projection that looks like goita in the name of jesus the power of god is taking that devilish thing away from you 
now i decree and declare that the spirit that is back of any infirmity by the power that raised christ from the dead we decree and declare that spirit is hereby caused now and then i declare be healed right now the lord is healing someone you have an issue of blood the power of god is coming on you and the lord is healing you right now let that demonic thing leave you now someone you have a problem with your gum your gum your teeth now your gum not really the teeth but the gum the power of god is touching you right where you are in the name of jesus there is someone i think is your father he's going blind with what i'm seeing in my vision it's like he's having glaucoma and the thing is deteriorating and they've told you nothing much can be done in the name of jesus may the power of jesus rest right now and bring you healing for in jesus name we pray koinonia zaria i declare over you it is from glory to glory it is from grace to grace fire will never stop falling upon this altar in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ let's celebrate jesus give him a big hand clap hallelujah now let me make an altar call very quickly you may sit if you want you are in this place and you need jesus please listen carefully let's minimize movement you are here and you need jesus you are saying apostle my life has not yet been in place i need jesus christ please let me have your attention you are outside you are inside and you are saying apostle i want you to give me a chance i want to surrender everything to jesus you are in any of the overflows outside or you are here and you're saying apostle i've given my heart to jesus christ but for some reason i deviated and my life has gone down and i need to make it right i'm only going to count one to five i want you to run we have just one minute for you koinonia let's begin to clap for them as they come come run to jesus you can shift them and take them somewhere Koinonia, is this the best you can do? Two. I've made up my mind to go God's way the rest of my life. I've made up my mind to go God's way the rest of my life. Please come. I've made up my mind to go God's way the rest of my life. I made up my mind to go God's way. Perhaps you want to come out and you are saying, Apostle, I'm not sure if I'm saved or not. You can join them right now before I begin to pray. You are saying, I, I don't I don't think I'm a sinner, but I, I must confess I am not sure. There is such a thing as the assurance of salvation. Come and join them right now. Please, quickly, if you are coming, you should have known by now. You need Jesus. Please make your way to the front. Let's celebrate them as they come. now i salute every one of you young and old alike for making this noble decision for jesus the bible declares that as many who will come to him he will in no wise cast away i appreciate you for this bold decision and all of you who are um, at the various overflows and then also those following online here's your chance to make it right with jesus may i please request that you lift your right hand high above your head as a sign of surrender please say this after me say it loud and clear some of you are crying don't worry jesus christ is here with you say lord jesus tonight i have heard your word i need you in my life right now i confess that i'm not able to help myself but i believe that you are the son of god i believe that you died for me i believe that you rose again for my justification right now i receive jesus into my heart be my savior be my lord be my king i declare that the power of sin satan hell and the grave is broken over my life from tonight i am a child of god 
I go forward ever and backward never. Amen. Keep your hands lifted. Father, thank you. You are able to save unto the uttermost. I declare by the integrity of God's word that your sins are forgiven. And I call you recipients of the life of God. In the name of Jesus, the power of sin, Satan, hell and the grave is broken over your life. And I declare that eternal life is resident within your spirit. From tonight, you are the righteousness of God in Christ. And you go from glory to glory and grace to grace. For whatever and backward never for in jesus name i pray congratulations god bless you please may i request that you follow the counselors they are waving their hands there's a gentleman waving his hands please all of you follow in concert they'll have a word with you and then you'll be back to your seat let's clap for them as they go please very very quickly hallelujah praise the name of the lord just for a reminder take note of our ministry account details unfortunately we know that there are many scammers parading all kinds of accounts and all kinds of things please if and if you want to make any payments giving tithes, donation whatever whether for you or for your loved one we have only released one authorized account you can always verify with the finance department but then you may want to have it down so that you have it handy in all the major um, currencies so that you would help you facilitate your transactions knowing that your money was taken to the right place and then take note of all our official lines most departments in this house have official lines to ease the rich please do well to have it everyone in koinonia should have all of this you can just discipline yourself have it and then store it our pr department there's the number projected there the protocol department they have their number there the media department for all your media concerns finance department and then the zaria protocol they also have it there and then you can take note of the social media handles please koinonia zaria make sure that you participate in everything that has to do with the social media platforms dedicated for zaria facebook twitter instagram all of them at koinonia zaria and the lord will grant you grace in jesus name do well also to connect to all our social media platforms and may i encourage you to connect with the sunday services i know that once in a month we streams um we stream abuja service here but do well make it a point of duty and a discipline to connect to all our social media platforms especially the youtube um, channel koinonia global there are several teachings there they include my external ministrations not just koinonia teachings and um, you may want to do well to listen to these teachings for your spiritual edification have you been blessed tonight god bless you and thank you for your patience please rise as we close um we've we've stretched my apologies i've stretched you beyond normal so we are going to limit uh the number of people to to see please if it's not necessary may god bless you you can have a nice day after the grace please so that we minimize and even for those who we may be seeing please i'm saying it now so that we avoid embarrassment you can't take 30 minutes talking alone that may not be realistic there are people who need to go so maximum one two minutes and that's the end of it so you must be prepared those who are joining the line um it may just be a touch on your head and you go god knows what your problem is you told him you've received an anointing let's let's be people of faith please we may not have any extensive conversation or discussion so that we can finish and release our own people to go remember we have a meeting here 6 30 on the dot the lord bless you in jesus name let's share the grace in fellowship surely goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives as we dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. God bless you and see you next week.